Hello and welcome to another Kangaroo English Daily Digest. My name is Christian and today is Monday. Best day of the week. Um, so again, I have a lot to talk about, so I'm going to dive straight in. So, on Friday, I uploaded a Daily Digest where I talked about some scientific research that showed an effect of passive learning. So, I called the video, Learn English by Doing Nothing. Uh, and, you know, people thought it was interesting, but I also received a lot of people saying, Hey, Christian, I don't understand. This is kind of against everything that you've been telling us. Like, this follows more of the, 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 the theories of Stephen Krashen, for example, and also it, it seems to be the opposite of working really hard and paying attention, which is something that you always talk about. It doesn't make any sense. Now, there's a few things I need to say. Now, the reason that I make these daily digests, the reason that, that I tell you about these things, I will explain why at the end of this video. But but one thing specifically I want to talk about these studies is that when I say that passive learning has an effect, yes, it has a measurable effect. But of course, and common sense will, will tell you this, that the effect of that is not the same as the effect of paying attention and, and really, really concentrating and, and working hard. These passive things are like a little extra. But that's not why I'm interested in them. I'm not interested in them because they, they can augment your learning. I'm interested in them for a bigger reason. But, and that brings me to my next uh, paper. So something that I mentioned in the, in the previous video was this, this preprint. So preprint means it hasn't been peer reviewed. But it's still really a really super fascinating paper, okay? Um, and it's so it's published by Ben Ambridge from University of Liverpool, and I sent him an email this morning, and he said that we can we can have an interview in September. So I'm really looking forward to talking to him. And basically, he has proposed what he calls a radical exemplar model of the way that children learn languages. Now, again, and, and I said this before, children are a really interesting people to study because they're so successful at learning languages. So, if we can understand what they're doing, then we can use that for adult learning. Because obviously adults are smarter than children. I, 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 hope, that you, <laughs> I hope that you're smarter than children. So, imagine what you could achieve if you applied these techniques to... To, to, to adult learning. So, now here's, here's, here's the difference between this model of, of learning and normal models. So, um, now, <laughs> most people, most adults, when they go to learn a language, they learn the rules, okay? So, for example, they learn, this, this is scissors. This is the word for scissors. It's uh, an object for cutting. The sound is scissors. The spelling is scissors. And it's a noun. So they, they memorize this with the vocabulary and, and, and that's what they do. And then they learn about grammar. They learn about subject and verb and object. And then they learn the verbs that they can put in those positions. That is called the slot and frame model. So you have positions for these things, these words, you have positions in your mind and you insert the necessary things. So traditional thinking is that children have this kind of frame in their mind. They know that they, they need to start a sentence with a subject and then, then they need a verb and they need an object and they, they sort of go in and they, they put the things in the place and they make a sentence. But this is a completely different proposal and according to Mr. Ambridge, this is what he has spent 18 years of his life trying to, to develop. So, and he gives the example of, of a table. That's one of the examples in the paper, table. So, 
he says that it doesn't make sense this slot and frame model it doesn't make sense because it tells you what things you can include, but it doesn't tell you what things you can exclude. So for example, if a child learns that this is a table, well, they know that they can include this as a table, but how do they know that they can exclude this? How do they know that this isn't a table or that this isn't a table or this? And then how do they learn more abstract uses of the word table, like the water table or a table in a spreadsheet? Mm. So it's kind of, it, it doesn't make sense. And another example he uses is how do children learn the grammar by applying rules? And, and the example here is, for example, children know they can say, John feared Bill, and they know that children, children know they can say John frightened Bill, but they also know that they can't say John laughed Bill. Now, if they had this frame where they go right subject and then verb, and then if they had that frame in their mind, then they would produce these kind of incorrect sentences, but they don't. Children make mistakes, but they don't make these type of mistakes. So, what is he proposing? How do children learn languages? How should perhaps adults learn languages? And listen to this, listen to this. Children store the meaning of, of for example, the meaning of vocabulary as understood in that individual situation. Okay, that's just an example of vocabulary. What they do is they store like photographic memory they store the sound in great detail of every single sentence they hear. They store John, John Frighten Bill, John, they store it, they store it, they store it. They just store it, they just absorb it and they store it. Every single sentence, every single sentence. And then when they want to produce a sentence, they go back and they make comparisons of these examples stored in their minds. That's why it's called the exemplar model. So they're not f picking pieces to slot in. They're looking at 50 or 100 different examples of what they want to say, and then they produce something based on those examples. It's a totally different way of, of, of learning and producing. Now, <laughs> when I read this, the, my, my immediate thought was, Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. And, and because, come on, how can children store every single thing that they hear? It's not plausible. It's not plausible. It's today's word of the day, plausible. This comes from Latin. Do you l see anything familiar in there, in here? Plause. Let me give you, let me give you a... That's right. That's right. This comes from the same root as the Latin word applause. So something plausible is something like, yeah, we believe that's possible. We believe, we believe it, we like it. So something plausible is something that you believe can be true. So I was like, it's not plausible. Children can't store everything, but he has an objection. It's not plausible that we store all this information, but it turns out that research shows, listen to this, if you show 10,000 photographs to a person and then two days later they can randomly chose, they can randomly put 160 photographs as seen or unseen with a success rate of 83%. Okay, now the reason that I'm telling you all this is because of this. This is a quote from, from a Cambridge workbook about second language acquisition. Like the lenses with different color filters used in photographing Mars, they complement one another and are needed to gain a full spectrum picture of the multi-dimensional processes involved in SLA. Basically, all of this helps me to understand how we can learn a language better. 
so that you can, and that's all I care about, because I love you, and this is a Kangaroo English Daily Digest.